Marvin Harrison Jr. ready to be an Arizona Cardinal? Or is Austin Fork going to maybe trade this guy away in terms of uh, this number four overall pick? I I'm a little bit worried about the Cardinals and their intentions with this number four overall pick. But we have word that Harrison, Cardinals... Have a little have a little meeting set up. Hopefully that works out. We've got all kinds of NFL draft rumors. The Patriots moving away from the idea of even drafting a quarterback. Is that even a realistic thing that we could, you know, we could come across at this point? Is anybody gonna telegraph what they're really doing? We'll go over all that and more. Rasheed Rice admitting that he was involved in the crash on the freeway. Uh a lot, a lot to go over on that. We won't delve into it for too long because we've talked about it for literally like over 48 hours. Um, we also have a whole lot more. I'm going to say Raheem Morris. Raheem Morris, head coach, Atlanta Falcons, predicting it now, coach of the year. Raheem Morris, coach of the year. One of the best head coaching hires. We're going we're gonna to look back on this and say one of the best head coaching hires we've seen in a long, long time. This guy's a leader of men. A leader of men, the fantasy football show, begins right now. Live from the fantasyfootballshow.com studios, it's the fantasy football show. Live! Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Smitty is also live whenever news breaks. From the fantasyfootballshow.com news desk, here is your breaking news. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here for a breaking news news uh, 8 p.m. edition show like we do every single Monday through Friday. I'm still a little under the weather, so I'm trying to sound as coherent as I can be. I'm, I'm obviously still um, congested, as you can tell. Um, look, Raheem Morris, let's just start off with Raheem Morris. Raheem Morris is going to absolutely ball. Raheem Morris is, in my opinion, going to be one of immediately the best head coaches in the National Football League. This is a guy that literally does it all. Um, he knows offense. He knows defense. He knows everything. He knows every facet of the game. He, he could literally be offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator at the snap of a finger. And I don't think people realize that about him. I think they just assume, oh, he's a defensive guy. Oh, he failed before earlier on in his career. Uh, this is a guy that had such amazing amount of respect and commanded so much respect coming out of Los Angeles that the Rams' entire organization went to bat for this guy and said, you have to hire this man. Um, he is an absolute gem. He's going to be one of the best, thought of to be one of the best head coaches in the National Football League. This guy's a leader of men. And he went out there and had an amazing speech. Let me let me swap this graphic out while I talk. He went out and had one of the most amazing opening day uh, speeches that I think you can have. And just motivated every single person within that organization. Change is coming. It's all about family. It's all about being united. It's all about standing behind each other, keeping each other accountable, and the the Falcons are gonna absolutely turn heads. Bijan Robinson's gonna have well over 22, 2300 total yards. He's gonna be, I believe, the best pass catching back in the National Football League this year. Let's go. Mashed it's happening this year. I'm not saying he'll be one of. I'm saying he will be the number one PPR running back in, in fantasy football this year. I think Kyron leads the league in yards, maybe rushing touchdowns. I think Bijan's going to be the, the Christian McCaffrey of 2024. It's going to be an absolute total yard fest every time this guy's on, on the field. It's going to be, a, is it a 70-yard, 80-yard, 90-yard receiving game for him, one game? Is it a 150 yards on the ground, another game? Is he getting a combined two, three touchdowns? Um, it, This is going to be an amazing year for the Falcons. It's going to be an amazing year for Raheem Morris. It's going to be an amazing year for everybody involved, from Drake London down to Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts resurgence will be amazing. The Revenge Tour group. It's time for some revenge, 
revenge tour. Revenge tour. Revenge, revenge tour. And uh, of course, uh, Ray, Ray, have we seen? I think we haven't seen this guy in a while. Tyler Algier is better. God, tell me you don't know football. Really? Like, Ray, tell me you don't know football without literally telling everybody you don't know football. Like, it's okay that you don't. Like, everybody's welcome here, but good God, son. <laughs> We've got to put this on planet Uranus. And off he goes. To the planet known as Uranus. <laughs> I'll put you right by Arthur. That was, that was probably the worst comment of the year. We got to have a worst comment of the year board. I mean, planet Uranus kind of collects those, but good God. Um, all right, so let's get back to the other pieces of news here. Let's get it out of the way. Rasheed Rice admitted to being involved in the Dallas car crash on the freeway. And we all knew he was, but finally admitted to it. And uh, he, here's the report. This is coming from TMZ Sports. Rasheed Rice was involved in a car crash that injured multiple people in Dallas on Saturday. And he admitted to uh, the company that owns the Lamborghini, TMZ Sports has learned. Rice owned the Corvette that was involved in the crash and leased the Lamborghini from a company called the Classic Lifestyle. Rice was in the Lambo at the time of the crash and according to the leasing agreement, he's the only person who is permitted to drive the car. That could be a complication for him if he tries to suggest. And in here, it's very careful about where he was in the vehicle. There's no say. Maybe he wasn't driving. Maybe he was. This according to uh, the attorney representing the classic lifestyle uh, car company. Um, this guy, Coker, tells TMZ Sports, Rice fired off a text shortly after the wreck, acknowledging he was involved in a crash and promising to pay for the Lamborghini, which was totaled. <laughs> so, you know, there's maybe his attorney, fire off a text, get something out there that you're you're fleeing the scene. Coker says Rice, a classic lifestyle customer since the days as a student at SMU, was leasing the 2021 Matt Black Lambo for $1749 a day. So $1,700 a day. I was about to see a month, and I'm like, yeah, that's a lot. But a day. <laughs> $1,749 a day. Uh, as we reported, the Dallas PD wants to speak to Rice and others who left the scene immediately after the crash. It appeared that uh, the drivers of the Lambo and Corvette were racing when they caused a massive accident on a Dallas expressway. Nobody was seriously injured, which is really the key component here uh, because the, the, the severity of this goes up immensely if there's injuries it's it, it's, it's kind of sad in a way i mean it's, it's great that no one got hurt but it's sad in a way that that the determination of right and wrong comes down to other pieces of this unfolding a certain way like it, he should be held responsible and and accountable and it seems like because unfortunately no injuries occurred he will maybe potentially be getting some sort of by the indication of people we've talked to we've had uh, attorneys on to speak to this uh, on the show that it sounds like our opinion anyway and it's all we can do at this point is speculate mere opinion not any legal you know uh, facts or any any sort of uh, uh you know lean legally just saying that opinion based it sounds like this is probably heading toward a misdemeanor maybe a criminal misdemeanor but a misdemeanor nonetheless which will at the end of the day maybe have the optics of this forcing the NFL to what fire off a one to two to three game suspension to keep it somewhat in line with the Alvin Kamara debacle. Alvin Kamara, if you remember, uh, pled to a such a small, like disturbing, it was something around disturbing the peace like level of, uh, of uh, a misdemeanor. And the NFL for the optics of it said, we'll give him a, you know, a multiple game suspension, but a very small one. And I think the same thing's going to happen here. TMZ first reporter Rice was with friends at the bar restaurant called Local Tap and Table hours before the crash, where they were seen celebrating. Uh, you, you know, you could say that we're assuming, you can say we're piecing together this thing, you can say innocent till proven guilty, which everybody's entitled to in this country, and that's an important fact. Everybody should be innocent till proven guilty. Everybody in a court of law in the eyes of the public opinion in the eyes of the public we are allowed to draw conclusions and make speculative guesses as to what happened this man celebrating 
with a $1,700 car per day at a local bar celebrating, scene celebrating, and gets in a wreck and immediately runs away down the freeway ramp. You tell me what's going on. You tell me. He's innocent until proven guilty, but this man gets in a wreck, totals two vehicles, probably over a million dollars in vehicles left on the freeway with people still injured, and they're unaware how injured they are. They got lucky. Rice got lucky no one was killed or severely injured. These cowards ran off the, 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 ran off the, 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 the freeway, ran off the freeway like cowards, after being seen partying and crashing their vehicle and getting out of there as quickly as they can so they don't have to face any sort of police questioning. Gee, I wonder why. I wonder why they needed to get away. Rice's attorney said that he's co cooperating with the police. Yeah, right. And will take all necessary steps to address the situation responsibly. Dumbest statement ever. Most inaccurate statement ever. And the people that come in and defend this. Samita, you don't know what... You are a dynasty rice owner to the 100th degree. Or you just, for some reason, hate it when players get accused or whatever and you're just going to go to bat for them no matter what. Innocent people. A child was involved. Thank God the child was safe. These cowards... Running off the freeway after they cause a six-car pileup racing. And then the people come in and defend them. Somebody was in here the other day saying, Smitty, if you watch the footage, uh, the Lamborghini hit the Corvette. So really, it wasn't, uh, they weren't really at fault. Like, get out of here. Get out of here. Unbelievable to defend this man. Unbelievable. More to come. Um, but I, 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 yeah, honestly, the optics alone are the only thing that's going to make this man sit out a, a couple of games, maybe at most, at most. And the NFL is going to wait till the legal process plays out. So how long does that get dragged out? I will say, do you buy on the dip from a business perspective? This is what I do. I am able to separate situation from player and and, and keep my feelings aside. We went after Alvin Kamara like crazy in drafts, even though he was on planet Uranus. <laughs> we, we admitted that. People would be like, they come in every once in a while and be like, you're wishy-washy on Kamara. No, I'm not. We absolutely talked Kamara down character-wise and drafted him and won leagues over it because he was a 6th, 7th, 8th round, not sometimes ninth round pick. I, I, I'll say this. I'll say that at current or what was current around 25, 26, 27 overall value. You're talking about the 2-3 turn. He was going at 23, 24, 25, 26, right before the accident happened on Underdog Fantasy ADP. You can check that out. Um, also, you can you know click the, the link in the, in the description. Use code SMITTY. That'll double your first deposit up to $100. Plus, Underdog's giving away a million dollars during the national championship game. All you got to do is have an Underdog account. Click that link. And all you got to do is have an active Underdog account. And here's the link. I'll drop it. It's in the description, but I'll drop it right here. Here's the link. All you got to do is have that account. Click it. They'll double your first deposit. You can put down the bare minimum of 10. They'll double it. You'll get 20. And you just wait. Hopefully you get a big uh, amount of cash because underdogs dropping a total of a million dollars in airdrops to random underdog accounts during the big game. During the big game. Um, I, I'll say this. If let's say his ADP doesn't move much. And, and quite honestly, I don't know that it's moved much yet. We'll have more information probably tomorrow the next day, whether it's ADP's maneuvering around the 24, 25, 26 territory. But if it stayed there, I'm not going near it. And, and I know everyone's going to say, look, he's going to skate on this. And I, I don't disagree, but there's still the prospect of missing one, two, three, four games. We'll call it four max because the NFL doesn't have a heavy hand with such things. You literally have to be uh, gambling on women's volleyball on site to get a year suspension. <laughs> or or now they've dialed that back a little bit. But you have to do something that severe, right? Bet on women's basketball, women's volleyball, uh, men's cro uh, 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 cricket, men's cricket, 
uh, something like that. You have to bet on something like that on the facility that's unrelated to the sport in order to get a more severe penalty than causing a six-car pileup with a child involved and abandoning the scene and running like a coward. Those things don't don't correlate at all, right? Um, at his current, what seems to be 23, 24, 25, 26 overall value, and don't say he's not going at the tail end of round two, top of round three, because we've been watching it all offseason. You aren't paying attention. That's where his ADP is. We'll call it top of round three right now. If it doesn't move, I don't I don't want him there. There still could be a one to four game suspension, even if he skates on it, right? And on top of that, where's his head at? Where's his mindset at? This is a Kadarius Tony situation. Why why do the Chiefs go after these types of players too? I don't I don't know. Um I, I Hollywood Brown's in town. Hollywood Brown to the moon. Hollywood Brown is on the midseason monster list because we think he's probably at some point maybe going to be the most undervalued piece of the offense. So midseason monster, it is Hollywood Brown. Welcome to the board. I almost put him on the moon man list, but we, we, we want to make sure we got him on something. But Hollywood Brown's the better cost player. At cost, I'd rather have Hollywood Brown. Now, if his ADP climbs so high that it doesn't become a value anymore, we'll address that. But it's crazy to me that this man, Rasheed Rice, is even contemplated around the 24, 25, 26 overall territory. If he was to drop to, let's say, the fourth round, we'll have another another conversation that certainly protects in miss games and all that. But I'll still tell you, from the jump right now, give me Mahomes at 4.1. From the jump right now, give me give me a, a, a player like like Derrick Henry at 4.1 over Rasheed Rice in redraft. Dynasty is a little different, obviously. We can attack that question by question, case by case. But from a redraft perspective, if Rasheed Rice falls to 4.1, I'd rather have Mahomes. I'd rather have uh, uh, even Devontae, uh, Devontae Smith. I'd rather have a handful of players that still feel as much capable without the risk. ETN's there at 4.1, Mahomes is there at 4.1, sometimes Jalen Hurts can fall to 4.1, 3.12. If that's where Rasheed Rice is going to fall, and that's falling because his ADP is around 25, we'll call it 25, right at the 2-3 turn, I'm out. I'm out. It, it doesn't mean he can't deliver, it doesn't mean that somebody's not going to go towards you, it wouldn't affect him. But he did miss 2 or 3 games, so he did earn 4.1. Well, I don't care, I'm grabbing a safer player. Where's his headspace? He's obviously a diva. He's a wide receiver. Wide receivers are diva by nature, it seems. He's also a player that was very questionable off the field coming into the NFL. He had a checkered past. A lot of teams said that. A lot of teams were worried about this. And he's already making horrible decisions. And if you think getting in a, a vehicle crash, six-car pileup, abandoning the scene like a coward... And renting a $1,700 per day Lamborghini and totaling it. And leaving over a million dollars of vehicles on the freeway. And running away from people that may have needed his help. You think that's just being young. I, I don't know what I don't know where you, where you grew up. Or how responsible you were in your 20s. This man's not 18 years old. He's a grown man in the NFL making millions of dollars. And it's on him to be responsible at this point. There are plenty of players that are absolutely and totally responsible. Bijan Robinson is for one. I'm avoiding this man. I'm not buying on the dip. Not unless the dip puts him into a much deeper territory than Mahomes, ETN, etc., etc. Do as you will. But this is uh, absolutely... Uh, disastrous okay um marvin harrison jr as i mentioned earlier there is a on good authority this man will be where is that piece on marvin um i'll get to that in a second i guess let's let's address these as they come a look at what could be who could be trading up denver broncos and in vikings ian rapaport a few other sources talking about the two most likely teams to move up to take a quarterback um, that are not already, you know, teams that are not all, already scheduled to draft a QB in the top three. So this would be somebody going after the Cardinals, number four overall pick, or likely the Chargers, number five, or both. 
the Vikings are very much big players in the draft up speculation because they uh, uh, accumulated another first rounder here at 23 to go along with their 11. So the Vikings are clearly in like assemble multiple picks to get firepower to maybe move up. New England, very, very capable of potentially trading this pick. I'd say New England, Arizona, LAC, one of these teams does trade out of the, the top five. And the Vikings are the lead dog candidate and the Denver Broncos who got rid of Russell Wilson and need something significant or they're going to look like fools walking into the season getting rid of Russell Wilson. So their back's kind of against the wall to get at least a McCarthy or a Penix Jr. or Bo Nix. I think at 12, they're pretty protected into getting one of Penix Jr. or Bo Nix. But you never know. They could do a, a during-the-draft trade-up or if they could get maybe their hands on a, a quarterback they are eyeballing and think is a difference maker at three, they might make that move and say, we know JD5 is worth it to us if he falls, but even if he gets locked in there, Caleb's locked in, we love Drake May, let's say, or we love McCarthy. McCarthy feels like a Denver guy. McCarthy feels like a Minnesota guy. Um, Drake May feels like a Minnesota guy. Drake May kind of feels like a, a, a potential Denver pick as well. Both quarterbacks. It, it wouldn't surprise me if it went QB, 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 QB. And New England's not even in this pick, meaning Minnesota's in the three, Denver's in the four, and I hope that doesn't happen because I'm a Cardinal fan. And that goes into the Marvin Harrison news. Marvin Harrison, new, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, let me see if I can get that graphic on screen. I had it, and uh, for some reason it is gone. But uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is scheduled. Here it is. Let me put it up on my screen finally. Scheduled to meet with the Cardinals. And, you know, this is par for the course. Doesn't mean they're going to take them. Um, they could certainly trade out. A lot of his posturing, you know, is done to try and maneuver the, the, the pick. So he's scheduled to meet with the Cardinals uh, this week. Hopefully the Cardinals are smart enough to know that this is a big difference maker. The only way the Cardinals walk out of the situation where I'm a happy guy, and I'll be unhappy to a degree, right, if they get rid of Marvin Harrison Jr., this opportunity at four that is a generational talent, is there still is a wide receiver that's generational. Well, two, two more. Neighbors is generational, and so is a Dunze. There are three generational wide receivers in this draft class. And you could say that's unlikely, and it doesn't really matter because every year is case by case. One year does not necessarily dictate or paint a picture about the next year. Just because history tells us that usually there aren't three wide receivers that could be even top eight worthy in the NFL uh, come out of, coming out of one draft, doesn't mean that it can't happen. This is an unusual year. Everything is case by case in the NFL and in fantasy football and in stack gathering and prediction in the prediction business. And I'm telling you right now, Roma Dunze could be the number one wide receiver in this draft class. Uh, Malik Neighbors could be the number one wide receiver in this draft class. And my constant backing of a Dunze being in the conversation of the wide receiver one is not a knock on neighbors, even though people assume that is. And they say, Smitty, you're sleeping on neighbors. I'm not sleeping on neighbors. There's no coming back to me saying, told you neighbors was going to be good. We love neighbors. Neighbors of Dunze and, Mar and Marvin Harrison Jr. are all three moon men, as far as I'm concerned. And they'll all three be on it. Okay? They'll all three be on the moon men list. Marvin's, Marvin's actually, is he on the Saturn men? The Saturn men. One small step for man. He's on a shuttle tomorrow. Where, where's, is he on one of these? Man. He's not on one of them yet. The moon man dropping. I got so many, I got so many tears. I don't even, I don't even know who's on them anymore. I gotta, I gotta cycle through them like a Rolodex to find out. All three of them are elite. All three of them are elite. But landing spot could make a Dunze the number one overall wide receiver in an example Marvin Harrison goes to New England with no quarterback. He's going to be great no matter what, but can he be his max self? What what if, what if Adunze goes to the Cardinals? Okay, let's say the Cardinals trade down. Let's say the Cardinals trade down. Malik Neighbors goes to the, the, the Chargers. No, let's say he goes to the Giants. We want to make this scenario look good for Adunze, and then you tell me whether you think Adunze is good enough. I will tell you in advance he is. If Adunze goes to the Cardinals in some trade down and Neighbors goes to the Giants and Marvin Harrison Jr. goes to the New England Patriots and the, and the best landing spot by far is Adunze match with Kyler Murray, 
then Adunze has a shot to be not only in 2024, the number one wide receiver in the entire draft class, but the number one wide receiver long term in the entire draft class. So I'm I'm here to tell you that the Cardinals could botch this but recover by getting more draft capital still drafting Adunze. If they trade out of four and don't come away with neighbors or a Dunze, and, and they obviously pass on Marvin Harrison Jr., I'm going to break something in my office that's a piece of uh, machinery. I'll find something that I can live without, but I will smash it live on the show. <laughs> Whether it's a, a phone with a hammer, I don't know. What other piece of news do we have? Let me let me see if I can drop anything else on screen here. We've got this little number here. Raheem Morris holds his first team meeting in 2024. Just an absolute general out there leading men. This is going to be the coach of the year. This is going to be one of the best in retrospect coaching hires that we've seen in the last, I don't know, five, six years. It'll be talked about. Raheem Morris, what a great signing. The entire Rams organization went to bat for him. You know a team loves somebody when they literally are trying to help this man move on. Like, they don't have to go to those lengths to say, we, we from, from top to bottom, McVay, ownership, everybody's saying to the Falcons, you're getting a guy. You're getting the guy. And they went to bat for him. This guy brings in Zach Robinson, the offensive coordinator, the, the QB coordinator from the Rams 2023 Roster brings that guy over, Zach Robinson, the offensive genius, to man the offensive show. Raheem Morris controlling everything from above. Defensive-minded, but very offensive-capable. This guy could be the offensive coordinator. He knows his positions left and right. And nobody said a bad word about this man. Everyone said this guy could be your tight end coach. He could be the quarterback coach. He could, be, he could coach any position. He is the most versatile head coach and people that don't know what they're talking about, that run their mouth about, he's a defensive hire, they're looking at the surface level, you're playing checkers, this is 3D chess, and Raheem Morris was the best coaching hire in the entire offseason at the end of the day. Absolutely will be looked upon as the best coaching hire, and it's going to be glorious. Uh, other news, let's see. I think I got everything under control here. Um, Vikings, Broncos, two teams looking to trade up. already mentioned that. I think that's all she wrote. Now it's time for phone calls. Dial on in, dial on in, dial on in. Call into the show. Call, call, call into the show. I love when people don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> You're even more... You're so bad. Uh, what was that worst comment of the year so far? By far, the worst comment of the year was this one by... Who was it again? And off he goes. Ray. The planet known as Uranus. Tyler Algier is better than Bijan. Oh. <laughs> what was the worst comment of the year? By the way, my... My uh, my daughter put hot sauce in one of my drinks, and right before I started the live stream, I took a big swig. She, I'm sure it's an April Fool's gotcha moment. She's gonna relish later, and I cannot get the taste out of my mouth. My mouth is burning. I didn't know what was happening at first. I took a big swig, and I spit it back out. And I was like, "What is this? It tastes like gasoline mixed with the uh, the Gatorade." Um, my my throat is burning. Thanks a lot, little Smitty. Uh, phone lines are open. I I, I had to clo close there for a second, so dial in. I just restarted it too, so dial in, dial in, dial in. Appreciate you all. Phone lines are open. I can't wait for. I can't wait for everybody to. Yeah, she she got him. Got him. <laughs> Little Smitty got me good. Uh. Throat is burning. Throat is burning. Um, 
what 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 does what does everybody think of uh I want you to call in if you've got an opinion on whether you would trust Rice at even 4.1 value comparatively to the players that are falling there. Mahomes, ETN, Derrick Henry, uh, Devontae Smith, other wide receivers around that territory. And then I want somebody to call in and tell me where they think Marvin Harrison Jr. is playing football in 2024. And then I want someone to call in. So dial in if anybody has opinions on any of these matters that has an opinion on this Atlanta Falcons situation, whether it's good or bad, whether you want to come in like that guy, what was it, Ray, and say that Tyler Algier <laughs> is a better running back than B. Whatever your argument is, I'm ready for it. I want to hear it. I think everyone on this Atlanta Falcons roster is going to ignite and explode. And this is going to be one of the most exciting years of football we've seen in a long time. And a lot of the things that should have unfolded, not only for the last handful of years in Kyle Pitts, Etc. But specifically last year with Bijan and some other players, London specifically on this team, but in other areas too, and other teams, we're going to see a lot of stuff that should have already happened happen. And it's going to be amazing to see. We're also going to see a guy like Kyron re-deliver what he delivered last year on off the doubt and back of everybody's skepticism this year. This is going to be a glorious year. Not to mention that the football is being... Uh, received a lot closer to the 50-yard line than ever before, so scoring's going to be up. And who are the most advantageous players to score more touchdowns under the new kickoff rules? We'll go over that too. Because we might see a lot more rushing touchdowns or a lot less rushing touchdowns. A lot more receiving touchdowns, a lot less receiving touchdowns. We don't even know. We can predict. We can try and guess. But I have a feeling that the guys like Kyron that can lead the league in touchdowns on the ground Maybe even total touchdowns. I think Bijan leads the league in total touchdowns and leads the league in receptions for running backs. I believe Kyron leads the league in rushing touchdowns and rushing yards. I believe these guys, these important Gibbs, uh, Brees Hall, these important playmakers and facilitators and big playmakers are going to have monster numbers. And it's going to be absolutely crazy. Uh, Luke says, Smitty, I just joined the stream. Can you repeat everything? No, Luke. Little button. I can repeat it for you, Luke. How about this? Hit that rewind button, and I'll tell you all about it. Uh, dial in, dial in, dial in. Phone lines are open. Can't wait. Can't wait. Bijan's going to the moon. We interrupt this program to bring you a special message from the Bruce's mother. Get Bijan. Hi, my name is B. John Robinson. I like long walks on the beach. And, well, I also like scoring. Touchdown! Uh, was there a big earthquake in the West Coast? I don't know. Smitty, just joined the stream. So Raheem Morris could make B. John Robinson better. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably, Birdman. Probably. I think putting him in the lineup alone is going to make him uh, a whole lot better. Uh, over 150 of you here on YouTube, hit the thumb up button, please, on YouTube. And, and my, my Twitter aka x people 131 leave a comment dial into the show and my instagram people appreciate you do your thing Mostert broke ricky williams's running back tds and uh clayton's total tds in a season i do believe as we've mentioned before that the raheem Mostert extension is the best news devon a chan owners could ever come across and for some reason people just didn't see it that way and that makes me smile it makes me love the fact that people don't understand what in the hell is going on. And I love the fact that people don't realize that a 32-year-old Raheem Mostert is not likely to weather the storm one more full year. And that gives A-Chan not only not a need to play an entire game, 17 straight games, and break himself. He is meant to be in the old Eckler role of 
half receiver, half running back. That is what A-Chan is designed to be. And there's nothing that limits him from being a top five running back in that capacity. We just saw it last year. But the fact that he will get a handful of starts because of Moster being out, given how much they trusted him at the end of the year, Devon A-Chan is going to go to the moon. He's going to lead the league in yards per carry. Um, I think Darnell Mooney might really do well with Cousins. He could. I, I like Mooney. He's better as a, you know, a secondary third option. Secondary or third option. Definitely not a wide receiver one. But, you know, I, I think that there's still room for this team to say, you know, we brought in some good talent. Let's take a Dunze at eight. And if a Dunze goes eight, we have to have a real conversation about who in the hell is the number one there, London or Adunze? Because I think Adunze has the ability to be the number one, number two, number three, number four, top five wide receiver in the National Football League, depending on landing spot. Now, landing spot in Atlanta with London there makes it hard to imagine him being number one, but it's uh, you know it's certainly going to be amazing. Uh, too bad A-Chan is also fragile. Tell everybody, Pure Mustard, put it out there. Put it out there. Tell everybody to avoid him. Tell everybody to avoid him. I'm on. I'm insane watching on Insta and YouTube. That's how we like to do it. That's how we like to do it, pal. That's the way you do it. That's the really, the really the way you operate a live stream. A Chan or Bijan? Uh, a Chan's got a second round value, bro. Uh, Bijan's arguably the one, two, three, four, five overall. It just depends on what draft you're in. Depends on how bold you are. Depends on how many drafts you have. Um, Bijan Robinson is a top five overall pick. A Chan is a second rounder. Doesn't mean A Chan can't like technically outscore him, but like there's no conversation to really have here if we're talking about one for one at cost. Would you rather have a uh, like a JJ and then A Chan in the second round or Bijan in round one? Like that kind of conversation we can have, but Bijan's a whole nother round above him. So, you know, what you can get both these guys is the point. Travis is on YouTube and Twitter. Appreciate you. Um, what round are we snatching HN in? Anywhere in round two is fine. Even if it's the 12, 13 turn, I'm fine with it. Just make sure he's in round two. Don't don't start taking him in round one. Don't mess with his ADP. Don't mess with his ADP at all. What is a Dunze, What if a Dunze goes nine to the Chicago Bears? It's something that I worry about. At the end of the day, he's going to be fed. It's kind of similar to if... Marvin Harrison Jr. goes to the Giants. Like, we don't want it, but he'll survive. The The Bears will be down throwing the football. My problem is continuity. My problem is when they switch out their offensive coordinator, head coach, maybe even Ryan Poles the next year, um, if this thing fails or falters on the on the back of Caleb Williams, you know, even if, they, even if they're able to get the ball downfield and, and deliver it, but it's just no wins, a uh, disaster, like... Fields still fed DJ Moore, you know. So j just because a Dunes is getting fed successfully doesn't mean the team's winning or doing well. Um, I think Caleb is is on the verge of being a total bust. Could he prove me wrong? Sure. There's certainly talent there. Caleb has some of the most talent in this entire QB draft class. There's no doubt about that. But you know, so did Johnny Manziel. So did a handful of quarterbacks that failed. Ryan Leaf was talented. It doesn't matter. Like the, the the signs are there for me to say this isn't a leader of men. This is a guy that cried in his mama's lap after a loss instead of you know being with his teammates. This is not a this is a player that multiple Bears players have already come out saying you can't bring that Hollywood stuff here. Don't even try and bring that in here. Been very critical of him so far. This is not somebody that is, I believe, handling the spotlight well already. And he's already causing a whole lot of drama that's unnecessary for him, applying unnecessary pressure on him. I don't want a Dunze there. Would a Dunze survive? Yeah, but we will have to scale back the 2024 expectation a little bit. But at the same time, realizing that the bigger impact could be the changing of of the guard there while he's sitting there having to endure it. So if they replace the offense, you know, he has to endure change. That part's the more concerning part. But, I, I, you know, hopefully he doesn't go there. They have brought in enough wide receivers. You'd think that they maybe take a pass on that. I believe the Bears are very likely to trade out of the nine pick. But we'll have to see. Um, Bears, I think, go AD Mitchell, says Jack. That could be the case. Not there, though. Not that high. Not at nine. 
Achan doesn't need that many carries. Uh, first round production ag agreed. He's uh, he's Alvin or he's Alvin Kamara. He, well, he's Alvin Kamara meets Austin Eckler early in Austin Eckler's career. That's what we're talking about. So we got a call here. Let's see who this is. Hello. Oh yeah. Hey, uh, can I call you right back? Okay. All right. This number right here. All right. Thank you. I got to call him back. Um, yeah. So Rasheed Rice scares me. He should scare you, Birdman. I completely agree with you about Caleb, says Voice of Reason. It's possible the Chargers trade back and get Rome. I. It's possible that the Chargers trade back and get Rome, bro. But the other thing is it's very possible they just take Joe Alt and they don't trade back at all. Harbaugh's been hardcore on the offensive line conversation right now as of late. And the thinking here is at a uh, Seabass, turn the background noise off if you could. Seabass. You got the background? Thank you. Um, the Chargers are, are, I think, are no more than 50% likely to go neighbors here. I think it's Joe Alt, neighbors, and trade down 33, 33, 33% chance across the board. A third third percent chance they take neighbors at this point. Uh, what's going on, Seabass? You're live. Hey, buddy. Uh, I just want to echo your uh, sentiment there from last night. I was watching you, and you basically kind of summed up the whole Rasheed Rice thing with saying, why bother at whatever his projected current cost was, you know, we'll float it around mid-third, whatever. There's like probably six, seven other guys you could take with comparable value and not deal with any of the headaches. And I'm saying that as a guy that I wanted to be all in on Rasheed Rice. So I'm just saying, like, give me a Tank Dell, give me a, a Jalen Waddle. Etc. You know what I mean? Don't even bother with it. I'm intrigued now by Marquise Brown. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and maybe it'll give me give me a little more Pacheco too, eh? Yeah. You know they're just bringing back C E H. So uh, so you, know, it, you have to pay attention to that offense. Interesting note: Rasheed Rice already dropped on underdog fantasy um, ADP data. So if you go to underdog guys. You download the Underdog app. Code Smitty, I've dropped the link in the live chat. Let me drop the link one more time and pin it. But I've already checked it. They've refreshed it. His ADP dropped to 30 from 25 to 30. Went down five spots. So above Rasheed Rice is Malik Neighbors, Tank Dell, Mike Evans, Olave, Debo, Josh Allen, um, Diggs, DJ Moore. Now the question is, now that Tank Dell is above him, we got to look at the players that are still... Let me, let, me go ahead and, uh, let me go ahead and screenshot this and put it on screen. And let's let's take a little gander at this and see if we if we still agree um, that he's too high because now he's at thirty. I still think he's well past thirty six for me. Well past thirty six. I four point one is like I don't even like it. I don't even like four point one. But let's just say everybody's kind of okay with him being their fourth drafted player. Let's see how comfortable. So Dell is now above him. Malik Neighbors, Rasheed Rice. Um, again, the underdog link is right here if anybody wants access to this ADP data. But also, more importantly, if you want to be eligible to get some of that uh, $1 million that underdog is dropping during the big game, they're airdropping it into just all you got to do is have an underdog account. So I, I pin the link right now. Just click it, get an underdog account, minimum 10 bucks. They'll double your first deposit up to 100. And uh, anyway, um, Tank Dell, Neighbors, Rasheed Rice. Below that is Michael Pittman, Waddle, Josh Jacobs. Give me Josh Jacobs all day long over Rasheed Rice. All day long. Yeah, he's a steal. All day steal long. All That's day. the biggest steal. Why am I not? I'm doing a video tonight on Josh Jacobs ADP. Tonight, you better tune in and watch. Josh Jacobs, who is now a moon man, by the way, if anybody missed that show, we'll actually, we haven't officially unveiled Josh Jacobs as a moon man. We'll be doing that tonight. The moon man. See, I, I, I didn't even have his face up there. It's been this, this image. Josh Jacobs at number freaking 32 overall. You got to be out of your minds. Laporta right below that. Give me Laporta over Rishi Rice. Let me dominate the quarter, uh, the tight end position, number one overall tight end position. Keep, keep going. You're crashing it. DK. I take all these guys too. DK. I'll take DK over Rishi Rice right now. Over the risk of one, four, one to four games. I know some 100%. people are like, he won't get suspended at all. We don't know. We don't know. 
Okay. Yeah, but like you said last night, Hurts. the headache that comes with it. You got all this bullshit in your head about the accident, getting sued, people coming at yep. you. You know, it, you got to manage you. your image. It's it just like Camara. It, it, like it weighs on you. It's a yeah. distraction. D- Camara you know had I mean? for, for anybody that says, "Then why were you high on Camara?" That was the year after. The year that it all went down, Camara was garbage. He, he folded that year. The year this is all going down for Kamara, headache-wise, the courts, you know, the delays, Kamara had a, sh- a really shitty year. Yeah, and you know what? That's normal. He's yeah. a human being. If that shit was coming at me, I'd be the same way. Yeah, we'd all fold. But but here, here's, here's, here it is. DK, Jalen Hurts. Give me Jalen Hurts over Rasheed Rice all day long. Early quarterback. Just do it. Jump in. Feet first. ETN, Devontae you know Smith, here, Derek here, Henry. Here, here's something that's scary. Derek Henry. Where, where's Mahomes compared to uh, Rice? Right He's now, still down there, bro. That, but that's what I've been saying. Mahomes is my favorite pick over Rasheed Rice. If you had to just give me a guy guaranteed to be available when you're on Back the clock. Back the truck up. Back the truck up. Back, put him in. Uh, uh, Cooper Cup, even, you could contemplate. That's where you maybe get dicey for people. But right above that, Derrick Henry, you're talking about 38 overall. 38 overall. I don't contemplate taking Rasheed Rice until 38 overall. Even on the spec that he gets one to four games. Well, I'll be your wingman. I'm right there with you. I'll hang up, man. Rock on, buddy. All right. Let her see, best. Appreciate you. We're coming back in a little bit, guys. Um, you know, we're coming back in a little bit. Uh, we're going to be talking about Josh Jacobs and how amazing he is this year. That's tonight's live stream. Don't miss it. On the main channel here, Josh Jacobs. We're coming back for it. Uh, let me see if I can get this guy on the phone. Otherwise, maybe I won't hang up. <laughs> you guys are pending whether he answers. I'll be back, though. Josh Jacobs. This is in- involving a service on, on the vehicle. Nothing's wrong with it. Just He's not, he's not answering. Uh, he's not answering. Yeah, he's not answering. We're staying. We're staying live. We're staying live now. We're staying live. <laughs> you can thank the service guy for not picking up. Phone lines are open. Who else wants to call in? Phone lines are wide open. Uh, Seabass, excellent call. Seabass, bringing the thunder. ADP data right in front of your face. Unbelievable. Malik. Washington over Corley. No, thank you, Prime. I don't hate Malik Washington, but no way I'm drafting him over Corley. Malachi Corley is the yak machine. Um, You heard it from this man first when I put him on the freaking Moon Man list before anybody even knew his name. The Moon Man. Malachi Corley, look at him. Maybe Jacobs will unblock Smitty. If he's a moon man, wouldn't it be great if we could get him to unblock? Maybe we start a, a tag Josh Jacobs, have him unblock Smitty. It's also possible that he unblocked me anyway. Um, I'll have to check. Sometimes players will do that. They'll go through their social media teams will even unblock people. I don't know. Like that that, are, that look like they could get some buzz or content. It's weird. It's weird how they'll do that. Smitty is the, uh, let's see here. I'm the James Brown, hardest working man in the business. Thank you, Mustard. Appreciate you. He can't get open, says Voice of Reason. Who are we talking about? Corley? <laughs> okay. Okay, Cor- Okay, Voice of Reason. You're not being very reasonable here. Because Malachi Corley is the mo- one of the most gifted across the middle in, in, the, in the college game, bro. This is a speed demon, a footwork, a yak yard machine. This is a guy that uh, is going to absolutely prove, and he's hungry. He has, Malachi Corley has, one of the biggest appealing pieces of, of what he brings to the table is his mentality. He has that St. Brown mentality, that dog in him that says, you doubt me, I'm going to tattoo your name on my arm. I'm going to read your name off on a list every morning when I wake up and look in the mirror. It's going to be unbelievable. Uh, Josh Jacobs is going to smash it in Green Bay. Absolutely. And that's what tonight's show is going to be about. 100%. 100%. He is a dull Debo, says Voice of Reason. Okay. What else we got? Phone lines are open. Dial in. 
call into the show call, call, call into the show Josh Jacobs smash tonight's show don't miss it don't miss it don't miss it should I call in sure Travis call in we get, we'll, we'll take another call or two before I, I jump this guy uh, from the service department was supposed to call me back um, I'll try dialing him again in a second He's a dull Debo, says Voice of Reason. You watch. Malachi Corley is amazing. I will say that we were pretty high on uh, uh, Jonathan Mingo, and that didn't work out. But that shouldn't make you like think that that translates. Like, oh, we got to not be high on these more unknown guys. Tank Dell was unknown. Tank Dell. You know, there, there were very few people beating the Tank Dell drum. But we were. Your boy was. And it won leagues. Malachi Corley very much has that feel um also ricky parasol has that feel ricky parasol is potentially something in between tank dell and puka for this 2024 season if he lands in the right spot travis you're live hey um yeah it's funny i was saying last night in the chat i i could see the chiefs drafting a guy like parasol especially if um especially if they don't know what's going on with the ice and you know, Hollywood is still injury prone. We like him. I like him a lot, but they could still use another receiver. Um, They'll definitely draft him. Be now. I, yeah. Where do you think? Uh, where do you think Prince will go? I don't know. I mean, he could go as high as like I, 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 he, I think so. he could go in the second. He really could. Um, yeah. I I think a team like. Like, I could see him with the Chargers or something if they were to go offensive line and then they shock everybody and take, you know, a different player later. The the Falcons, the... I mean, he could go anywhere, man. When you get into the second round, teams will just gobble up a wide receiver. You know, Pittsburgh could. Um, uh, Dallas could. Who knows who, who they're going to grab to be that number two in Dallas and try and make an impact. Uh, Buffalo. Buffalo would be great for a wide receiver. Any wide receiver will be good in Buffalo. Um, Leggett would be amazing in Buffalo. Corley would be amazing in Buffalo. Baltimore for for Parasol. KC does make a lot of sense though. I think KC's good. Yeah. Cincinnati maybe for when they let Higgins go next year. A lot of opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, anyone anyone who wants sticks him in the slot, I think, will be pretty happy with him. He's yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, I bore. It. It's so hard to say, but I wonder, I wonder like him versus a McCon- Like he is he like a step below a McConkie or Keon Coleman or who? Do you think he uh, pierce off? I think he, I think he could be better than McConkie. I think McConkie could be better than him though. Like it just depends on the situation. But I think Parasol is one hundred percent one of the most exciting. I love him. Uh, I mean, he, he, the guy's a freaking phenom that I think a lot of people don't see coming. I like him a lot, but he does need a good situation. All these players do like Leggett could be Leggett could be and, and keep in mind, everybody, you know, is, is all on board this Leggett train now and, and, and the Malachi Corley train, it doesn't seem like it's ever left the station, which is good. I still like that people don't, they, they doubt him. But the Leggett, everybody's all over Leggett now, especially with all the clips of him talking and everybody loves how he kind of sounds like Randy Moss and he's got like the coolest accent and people just, they, they love they love playing those clips and so people are getting very aware of him. Um, these situations are very, very important. So like if Leggett goes to, let's call it Jacksonville, I don't know, it's crowded there. And we also saw the number one wide receiver not get utilized in, in Ridley last year. So I don't know that the, every situation is like, going to make a guy like Leggett who's not quite in the the tier of the big three right so he's, he's not like situation proof his pedigree is not going to push through and and get him the spotlight Leggett could get forgotten Leggett could get drowned it out so he does need a, a, a nice landing spot but like let's say he goes like to Baltimore that's fantastic for him um uh, Buffalo you were talking about how him and him and Mingo are kind of like Mingo last year. People were very high on him, and he 
Yeah. They're, they're both kind of bigger, you know, bigger body guys, muscular guys. Yeah, Mingo went to a horrible spot. He ends up in the Panthers, and you just kind of, you don't know what to do with them right now. Yeah, I would say the two best landing spots for Leggett would be, would be Buffalo and, um, what did I just say? Buffalo and Baltimore. Those would probably be the two, the two best spots for him. And, and quite honestly, you know, Leggett going that high wouldn't shock me. But, hey, what do you think about the ADP data update? So, Rasheed Rice fell all the way down to 30.4. That's his current ADP on underdog. That's the, the initial reaction from people. Now, keep in mind that this is not probably where he levels. This is probably the fact that a lot of people are still drafting him high. Some people don't even know what's going on. And and so this initial reaction is going to bump them down. That'll raise some red flags. And usually a bump down triggers people to then, you know, say, well, why, why is he falling? Or, you know, he's lower than I thought. So he'll probably fall. But, like, from the players on screen, which ones scream the most value? Uh, uh, like, Jacobs, to me, that's why I even said we're doing a Jacobs show tonight. The fact that Jacobs is at 32 overall is insane. So Jacobs, um, Laporta, Jalen Hurts, ETN. I've always liked Metcalf. Like, yeah, DK. I've always been a fan of DK Metcalf. DK's good. I mean, would you even take um, Kelsey at the tight end position over she Rice at 30? Like, I'm not saying you take Kelsey. Kelsey's a, a way a ways down, 10, 11 ADP spots lower. Mm-hmm. But like, do you feel like like where's rice in your mind? Well, like I guess I I said when it first happened, I, I figured once it all settled, you'd only end up dropping like half a round to a full round, and that probably still wouldn't be enough for me to take him. Um, so like I don't think he'll fall any further than like maybe around Kelsey. I, I guess I could see him drop that far possibly, but um, if he's in that area. Uh, I guess it depends on what type of team I'm trying to build because I'm not a big fan of Kelsey. Ron Navy, I, who is your top player on this list that's below Rice? And the names include Pittman, Waddle, Jacobs, Laporta, Metcalf, Hertz, ETN, Devontae Smith, Derek, Derek Henry, Cooper Cup, Kelsey. Who, who is your favorite name that pops off? And Mahomes is below that. Mahomes is probably my favorite, to be honest. But Jacobs and Mahomes. Uh, who, who pops... Who pops out as a, a like clear no brainer take him over rice every time? Hurts. And and he's like five, six spots below, so you're almost get like if it was like they're neck and neck, like let's say you're you were to look at Pittman here and Pittman was your guy, you're gonna have a fifty percent chance most likely of getting Pittman over Rice because he's right there. But Hertz being so far down on the ADP data, it's like almost 80-90% lock. Meaning that you should never draft for she Rice. <laughs> you know, unless you're trying to just mix it up a little bit. But yeah, Hertz is a great pick. Uh, what non-quarterback sticks out? Jacobs, Laporta, DK, ETN, Devontae Smith, Henry, Cooper Cup. I like Laporta. Yeah. Yeah. Positional Laporta advantage there. Would be my you know what's crazy too in fantasy? When, you, when you're when you going to make a bold move that has a little bit of risk to it and the risk being that rice is unaffected by this and he blows up and you regret passing on him one of the best maneuvers is to go in that different positional advantage uh territory because now it's it's like a uncomparable comparable um uh comparison you know because like even if let's say rice ends up being everything he was supposed to be which is you know his adp used to be around the two three turn Laporta, the, the positional advantage there, you could argue anyway, even if you could guarantee me Rice was going to produce what he was supposed to produce before this crash. So, like, that is a, going Hurts, going Mahomes, going Laporta, going a different position is, I think, a smart way to, in some ways, like, pivot. That way you're, 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 you're totally smashing the pick. You're not trying to, like, replace the pick. Um... Just kind of the way my mind works too. Like Laporta, you're you're crushing the tight end position. You're getting the number one tight end. Mahomes or Hurts, you're getting the number potentially the number one quarterback, and you're getting him at a thirty overall territory, which is just a smash. 
It's not even early quarterback drafting. Probably, probably beating his name being brought up. What do you think of Kelsey? Do you think we continue to see him like just kind of slowly, you know, decline? Or do you think he bounces back the last year? Uh, I he looked like he looked kind of slow and things just didn't look great. Yeah, I think he picked and things up. Valuable. Yeah, I think he picked things up enough to make me think he's capable. Um. I also feel like a lot of it was the offense just was out of tune. Um, mm-hmm. I, 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 I get. I guess it I would say, again. yeah. I guess I would say that like injuries more the concern. Do I think he can deliver? Do I think Mahomes can get the ball in his hands? And he's still a big enough guy to kind of command the space around him. And so it's all about delivering the football to him, and he, him still being able to even if he can't cut the same and he loses a little bit of a step. That's the one position tight end and wide receiver where you can lose a step, but your intelligence, your experience, it can all still have you produce if your quarterback is good. Whereas running back, you can't. You lose a step, you can't hit the hole. It's like my elevator analogy. The elevator doors are closing or the subway doors, and you're supposed to run and try and get through them before they close. And let's say there's no protective measure that makes them pop open. Like you're just, you're going to smash right into them. And that's the way the, the hole is for running back. It just closes. But I don't know. I, I would say, like, tread with caution. I think fourth round, fourth drafted player value is pretty good caution. And I wouldn't take him in every league. I'd much rather have Laporta a little earlier. I'd rather have McBride around later in general. Like, give me give me Hertz or Mahomes or Jacobs here and give me McBride mm-hmm. the next round. Like, I'd much rather McBride than Kelsey if it can get me a Hertz or Mahomes right well, where Kelsey is. What about Kincaid where he's going? Love it. Kincaid's going, uh, uh, I want to say, like, really late. He, he might be climbing a, a little bit, but Kincaid is looking like he is, well, he's climbing. He is climbing. He's about 70. Yeah. And, and 70 overall, that puts him positionally around other other players. Like, at 70, that is, um, that is Aaron Jones, George Kittle, David Montgomery, Chris Godwin, De- uh, Deontay Johnson, Joe Burrow, Hopkins, JSN, Evan Ingram. So there's some respectable names that I might take over Kincaid um, at times, for sure. You, you know, Addison, Brandon Thomas. I also love Brock Bowers a ton because he's going at number 82 overall in redraft on underdog, yeah. on underdog ADP. And, and to me, that's better than Kincaid's value. So, yeah. I, I, Brock Bowers exactly. can win you a league at 80, even as a rookie. The, the, the odd thing with the, the weirdest thing with uh, Kelsey to me was his top set, output because he still had 984 yards. He was still a top five uh, tight end, but the, the five touchdowns were, I don't know if that was an outlaw, outlier or what. Like, I would think he could just score more than that this year, you know, eight or 10. And if he does yeah. that, he's probably a top two. Oh, yeah. yeah, I love Kincaid, but yeah, McBride, McBride, I mean, Kelsey, to answer your question, ultimately, Kelsey at, as a second tight end at 40 overall ADP, McBride's going 10 picks later, 10 to 12 picks later, Pitts is going about 23 picks later, Kincaid's going about 25 to 28 picks later, and Brock Bowers is going literally double the ADP, he's going 82 versus King Kelsey's 40. So give me Brock Bowers at cost, and then I'll take Mahomes. Oh, Mahomes yeah. and Bauer. Like, let me ask you a question: Would you rather have yeah. Bowers and Mahomes or just Kelsey? And then whatever tight, whatever quarterback you're getting later, smash. Well, yeah, it would probably it would end up being like a, I don't know, in that 80 80 range is like Prescott, Love. Kyler. Which is still good, but if you go a little early, yeah. But Smitty, still, when will the Mahomes draft? And Bowers is awesome. Brockout says, when will the draft ADP be great again? It's great again right now because we're seeing all this value on the board. Thank you, Rockout, for the super chat. Rockout to the moon. Um, make super chats great again, like Rockout just did. Drop one if you got one, and I'll answer it right away. Ron, what else are you thinking here? Um, any any thoughts on? On uh, Rice, any thoughts on any of the other topics? Any thoughts on any other new topics that we haven't covered yet today? Floor is yours. Well, with uh, 
on on the Kelsey thing, the thing is, is Mahomes can extend Kelsey's career, mm-hmm. just like Brady did with Gronk. So is Kelsey done? No, I don't think he's done. I think right. he could still top performer because of Mahomes. Now, if he had a different quarterback, it would be a different story. <clears throat> but got Mahomes, and Mahomes can extend his his career definitely. I think. Um, kind of made a mistake. I thought I was calling into the uh, the fantasy basketball show, and I was going to say, "Yeah, Embiid is back, dude. He's back playing." But wrong show. Oh, <laughs> is that is that a is that a bad joke, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa! I've had so much crap going on lately. I'm just trying to make yeah. light of stuff. I'm sorry. All. Let's send let's send Ron's joke to the moon. To the moon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ron. Um. Huh? So, uh, yeah. I mean, R- Rice. I mean, what about Dob- What about Dobbins going to the K- Kansas City? Who? Oh, JK. JK he, he, he's not. He's not. He's not now. They 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 re-signed Clyde edwards alaire and they used J.K. Dobbins as a as a, just a, a leverage piece. That's a shame for him. Oh, so that's no longer happening. Yeah, they just were trying to use him to to get Ceh to come in and sign a a, a deal. Poor J.K. J.K. Probably, hopefully they paid for his flight and everything. I'm sure they did, but. But yet, bad. JK ain't doing nothing. That guy, that guy's the most injury prone no. running back. But Clyde Edwards Alaire, I'm really kind of shocked. I'm shocked, but not shocked because it's the NFL. But I'm surprised we didn't hear a little I'm bit sure. of Joe Burrow bring CEH over to play for the Bengals. I was really kind of shocked we didn't see that happen. I'm surprised you didn't yeah. toilet flush that comment put on uh, Uranus. Yeah, we well we put we we gave it the respect it deserves. It's one of the worst comments in the history of the show. And off he goes. That's, that's why to the planet known as yeah. Uranus. I thought you were gonna play toilet with it, but didn't. Tyler Algier is better. We probably gave uh, uh, that Bijan that bull, fifty dollar bull prediction. By the way, if anybody wants to drop a fifty dollar bull prediction, they go up here. Um, here in this box anybody that drops a $50 prediction and last year the one that won was one we probably put on planet Uranus who probably laughed at it pretty hardcore and it was Bijan related and it said Bijan would be a backup running back in 2023 and he really was somebody was <laughs> he's trolling making that prediction and they ended up getting it I know the fact that he our, spent our, was it our, uh, Arthur Smith's son or something? No, it was Aloha. The it was Aloha, and he never really comes oh, around. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, Aloha <laughs> dropped that and it kind of vanished. He, he's come back before, but then he, he comments and he leaves. But he dropped. I can't believe you. We thought. We can't believe you're wasting a $50. I mean, he's d- donating to the show, and it was, you know, and good fun. But, like, man, put a good prediction up there. And it won. <clears throat> it absolutely won. So far, we got Ron's Atlanta Falcons win. Let me read them off here. So the prediction so far on the big board, and anybody drops a $50, the, the prize, the winner will start the show on camera if they want, or they could be on the phone. We'll start the show uh, as a, you know, side-by-side video, like, you know, doing the intro, and we co- co-host a, a couple segments with me. Uh, Fields MVP 2024. Um, shoot, who was that? That was me. Okay, so these are both you. Uh, 316, let me write, I gotta write your name up there on that one too, just so we don't get confused. So this is Ron. Okay, Fields, MVP 2024, Ron Navy, Atlanta, and NFC Champion. So you have both of those. So those are both Ron Navies. Um, Fields, starter, uh, by week four. Hold on, I'll call back in, hold on. All right. Starter by week four. And then um, top 12 quarterback, that is by Matt O. Uh, golf, his life, three twenty on March 20th, he said Pittsburgh to the Super Bowl. 
Deckard says KC number three Super Bowl. They'll win a third one in a row. Um, Ray G says Tank Dell, 1,500 yards and 13 TDs. Those are the $50 bull predictions so far. So those are pretty good. Um, we got another $2 super chat from Rock Out, the man, the myth, the legend. He says, any per festivities for men's final four in AZ? Any, um, what's he mean by that? Like, you mean, the, am I going to do anything? Because it's in Arizona? I don't know what per means. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, no, I'm not doing anything and, I, you know, won't be alive for it or anything. But Underdog is dropping a million dollars in... Diff, you know, different increments that add to a million dollars into underdog accounts. That link is pinned in the live chat. All you got to do is have an active underdog account and they'll be dropping, air dropping during the game. Probably there's going to be probably one at halftime, one at the end of the game, probably one in the first quarter or something like that. And, 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 and they'll be dropping tons of them. Like some people might get a $20 and then later on could get another $50 or $100 deposit. It doesn't mean that you just get one. It doesn't mean that you get any. You could get zero. But some people reported that they had multiple. Uh, Ron, I think Ron got one. So last time, yeah, last time we did this. So thank, thank you, Rock Out, for the additional super chat. All right, anything else, bro? Um, the, the thing I actually called in about was, um, I know we've covered it a hundred times, but the one thing I, I just can't wrap my head around, and maybe you've seen something to change your mind a little. I don't know this. The J.J. McCarthy stuff, again, I preface it by saying he could be good in the NFL. But you hear things like, you know, the ceiling, they see Jared Goff or Alex Smith, or, you know, it's fine. Wouldn't a team rather take roll the dice on a guy with the ceiling of uh, Josh Allen or Herbert or Lamar? Like, these teams with the top three picks really, or the top five picks really are happy with just taking a guy that, might only be as good as a golf now. Not like oh, when he was drafted, you know, the whole elite prospect versus elite player thing. Um, it just kind of has me stumped. I don't know. I'm, well, don't you as, think as a don't, Patriots fan, I'm, I'm I'm worried that's what's going to happen. Don't you think? In, in, a lot of this talk is, about J.J. McCarthy. And this is why I think I would be a good GM. I really do. I, again, I, I admit that I could burn a franchise to the ground within a year, but I could also save it, win a Super Bowl within two years. But if I was in charge of the New England Patriots, wouldn't you pick up the phone and say, hey, we'll give you... I mean, the field the Fields trade alone was a no-brainer for me. I would have traded for Fields mm -hmm. and, and drafted Marvin because having J.J. McCarthy and no wide receivers is like minuscule in terms of impact as having Fields and Marvin Harrison Jr. But let's throw that out the window and say that that's gone. Don't you think it would be smart for the Patriots to pick up the phone and say, hey, Harbaugh, we'll give you the number three overall pick for Justin Herbert? I've been saying that too. Yeah. I, I, I give him I, the three and next year it's for him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. you give him more, but I mean, like, he, they would be, he would be very right. tempted. He would be very tempted. A, he could still do what he could get Joe Alt at five. He could then get McCarthy at three right. or Joe Alt at three, McCarthy at five, however he wants to do it. But you would you would end up getting yourself your, your franchise quarterback, which, like you just said, is McCarthy worth that risk? He's not. He's not. I, I would 100% make bold moves. And and the, the whole notion that you can't have, a, similar to fantasy, it's like saying, hey, would you rather have Rasheed Rice at 35 overall or 30 overall, or would you rather have Tank, or would you rather have, let's say, Mahomes there at 30 overall and then Devontae Smith the next round? It's the same thing here. Like, would I rather have Marvin Harrison Jr. in fields or McCarthy only? It's like, it's just stupidity. It's just, I, I, and everybody's going to say, what, you know more than a franchise or organization? Well, I think I wouldn't be doing this if I wasn't arrogantly, maybe, maybe naively, but arrog arrogantly in the, in the, in the, the viewpoint of, yes, I, I feel like I do have something to bring to the table or why would I even get on camera and talk, you know, like, Hey, these teams know more than I do. I'm just here to talk. 
Like, of course, I, and you could say it's arrogant. You could say I'm misguided. You could say you're going to miss a whole bunch, and I will. But I don't think I was wrong in saying that every team that needed a quarterback that didn't take Lamar Jackson for two first-rounders, I can confidently say I was right in every single one of those organizations that didn't do it was wrong. And I can confidently say, I think, one year from today, even if it doesn't work out, even if Pittsburgh ruins fields, it was worth the gamble for every single one of these teams. All 30 teams, really, that weren't involved. All 30 teams should have taken him as the backup, including teams that have Joe Burrow, that have uh, Tua Tagovailoa, especially Tua Tagovailoa. Minnesota Vikings. I mean, this is stupidity. It's just straight-up stupidity. We got a $20 hauler from Mike Parker. It says, I have the 1.3 pick. In a rookie draft, Harrison and Neighbors will be gone. I have running back Brees Hall, ETN, Rashad White, uh, Spears, Amon Ra, Nico, McLaurin, Lockett, Dynasty, no super flex, uh, running back or wide receiver at the 1.3. So we saying Harrison and Neighbors will be gone. I take a Dunze, and, and that's, you know, spec right now. Like, could... Braylon Allen or Jalen Wright go to Dallas, and we all be talking that up later, maybe. But bottom line is, Adunze, in my opinion, can be the number one overall wide receiver. Of course, I rank Marvin Harrison above him. Of course, if landing spot's better for neighbors than it is Adunze, I would have neighbors ab above him. But very easy for me to say Adunze is by far and away the best talent, unless you need the tight end position filled as well. I'm looking at your roster here. Did he say he had a tight end? Doesn't, I mean, he must have quarterbacks. I mean, that. Bowers exactly. is a fantastic pick as well. So it's between Bowers and Adunze, and their landing spot will really guide you, bro. And thank you for the $20 hauler. Alert. Super chat alert. Um, and of course, you know, I'm here for you to, to you know, update this situation. Hit, hit me again once we have landing spots before you have to make your move. We'll go over it again. Like, Mike, I can help you with this once we know the landing spots. And if for any reason you got to make a decision right before landing spots, I don't know if that's how your draft works. Probably not. Then just hit me again right before. Like, and we'll, we'll, we'll make the best educated guess we can. But I have a feeling that we can discuss this after the draft, and we certainly will. But right now, very clear, Adunze, Bowers, in that order for right now, Mike, for right now. Appreciate you dropping that. Rockout says, Smitty, you on Josh Jacobs. Nice pick this year. Absolutely wait for the live stream tonight, Rockout. Thank you for the $2 hauler again. We're doing a Jacobs um, ADP show tonight. So, Mike, thanks again, Mike. Appreciate you. All right. Uh... Travis, I'll see you tonight, maybe. Around midnight, you think? Uh, yeah, hopefully a little earlier, but we'll see. All right. All right, later, bro. Then. Later. Everybody, I'll be back. Please like the stream on your way out the door. We got 300-plus eyeballs still in here from YouTube. We're around 140 to 160 popping in and out. Hit that thumb-up button on your way out the door if you're from Twitter aka x make sure you get on over to the youtube show it's more interactive much more enjoyable but i do appreciate you watching from twitter um but hit 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 the youtube channel subscribe if you're new if you're from ig you know what to do i appreciate you all um jacobs live stream tonight josh jacobs live stream tonight we're doing it live live monday through friday 8 p.m eastern every single monday through friday 8 p.m eastern Live when big news breaks. That's how we roll. That's how dad did it. That's how America does it. And it's worked out pretty well so far. See you all tonight on the Josh Jacobs Graveyard Stream. Thank you, moderators. Thank you, Blackbeard. Thank you, Travis. Thank you, Sick Nasty. Thank you, Space Ricky, if you're in here. Ter Terry Roberts. Uh, I said Blackbeard already. Uh, Vampy, if he's in here. Has anybody seen Vampy lately? I've sent Vampy some texts, and he hasn't even responded. I'm hoping he's okay. Travis, thank you. Appreciate you. Superfish, see you later. Birdman, see you later. Blackbeard, appreciate you. Hoosiers, deuces. Voice of Reason, later. Fallen, see you later.
Mike, appreciate you again. Thank you to my super chatters. Mike Mike in the house, $20 hauler. Rock out with several super chats tonight. Rock out's the man, the myth, the legend. First in the building tonight was who? Travis, followed by Brian, followed by Matt O, followed by Michael K, CPA, Kilpatrick, Dan the Grim Reacher, uh, Marty, Jordan, Bella, check yourself, Jeff T, Slater, King, Klondike, Chase, Carlos, appreciate you all. Superfish, later. P appreciate you all. 